Hey guys, this is Vince, Practical Performance. This is the second part um, of the uh, overview of the Vince bars and the uh, uh, front gusset cups that comes with them, that kit. Um, in this part, we're gonna focus on the Vince bars, the installation and, and the works uh, in the rear. In the next part, I'll be showing the, uh, the gusset cups and, and how they go in. Okay, so uh, first of all, these are the two different variants of the uh, simplified design Vince bar. So the first one here is the weld, and this is the epoxy rivet one there. The only differences are the whole patterns. Actually, it's easier if I show you over here. So there are four large holes here for plug welds. There are a number of, well, actually there's seven rivet holes there, 4.8 millimeter rivet holes. Otherwise the shape, everything is the same. Uh, on this strip over here, there are larger holes for, again, plug welds, and there are more holes. And this version here, there are smaller holes, this 3.2 millimeter holes, and a, a, a few of them, a couple fewer of them. Um, that's really the only difference. Uh, otherwise I made them identical. Um, the underside has this strip here that's formed, oh sorry, probably should point the, the phone, the camera towards where I'm, I'm, I'm pointing as well. So this has the strip here, well they both obviously do. Those, these strips here, they are formed to connect to this piece here. That's part of the uh, spare wheel wall or, or whatever you would want to call that. So this again is a 320 sedan. So it doesn't have the, uh, it has the, the you know, the, the proper spare wheel wall. Um, the sedans um, have a slightly different, um, or actually the non M3s I should say, have a slightly different, you know, look to this area here. But otherwise they're identical to the coupes and the, uh, the, uh, the tourings and also the uh, convertibles. So the Vince bar fits them all, not a problem. Um, what I've done here is I've prepared to install the Vince bar. Um, I've, I've done some, you know, as I said before, I've done some developing and some cutting and drilling and all sorts of stuff. So there's going to be damage and hole and rust and stuff there that, that is not relevant or applicable or, or something that you will see in your car. But, but I hope you can uh, just uh, uh, see through that. So one of those things is I had previously cut over here all the way over when doing an installation or actually test installation of a uh, original design, the stealth design um, Vince bar. I later spot welded this strip back on. So when you install the simplified Vince bar, you will be cutting not there. You will only be cutting straight over here. And this is about 30 millimeters. So you can actually use this hole as a reference. So you cut a straight cut right over that way. And you will be cutting this as well. And uh, in order to sink the Vince bar as, as deeply in, into this cavity as possible, we'll be flattening the, uh, the T's that are typically here. So what I've done is I've stop drilled the ends and as far as, in as as I can get, actually, this is a better use the camera, the uh, the light. See, I've uh, I've drilled. Let's see, there, and then I've cut and cut, and then I just hammered it down. And then on top of that, there will be a little patch plate that you you epoxy on top of it, just to make a flat area there, so you can sink the Vince bar as deep as possible. When you do this, you will have drilled from the bottom side up first. Uh, you can see from the uh, first video. So you will have a hole protruding up through here. That's a bottom hole. Originally, there's no hole there. You, you won't see this at all um, in, in your standard factory car. You'll have a car protrude, oh, sorry, a hole protruding up through here. What I did is, is I have some uh, pictures. Um, there will be an installation instruction as well, obviously, but there are some pictures. I can um, add the link to the folder. You will see that I put one of the uh, factory studs on top of it, and then I set the bar. Actually, let's do this. Let's use the, um, the uh, 
epoxy rivet, rivet version. So I sort of just set it on top of here, uh, sitting on top of, uh, where did I put that? There you go. So this is what I did. I screwed this in from the top. I've drilled from the bottom. I've used the extended uh, thread uh, tap. I thread it up and then I screw this in, in from the top like this. You can put the bins bar on top of it and then you can use this now to scribe and to scribe here and down this way as well. Um, in order to get it down and to get this strip into there, I, I first cut sort of a rectangular hole here, uh, a rough cut essentially. And then you make sure that you go as tightly as you can on a tight fit so this looks good when everything is, is uh, put together and you cut this so it's slightly this edge here is slightly under this level here this uh, shelf if you will because once you install this what you want to do is well actually also you you bend these outwards slightly to, in order to be able to stick this that edge there and this little lip there as well, I'm talking about these here, into under under there, and then get this strip to, let's see, sit in between this layer here and the box, the, the shelf we had in there. And then this is designed to sit very snugly inside of there. Okay, so what you will probably need to do, this is just straight out of the jig when I created the Vince bar created this one yesterday, fits actually very nice. You want as tight fit as possible here. To get that even tighter, um, you just pull this out again. And then you tap using a, a sledgehammer or something. You tap these gently and then press it down, test it and do that over and over again until you get the tightest fit possible. Um, same thing with this strip here. This here, I have preformed. You can probably see there, it's a little bit twisted. It's dark, let me do this. You should be able to see it's slightly twisted here and bent. Um, I've done that to the best of my abilities, not having your car. So what you will wanna do is make sure that it fits as tightly as possible between here and here because once you have this, see here, how that's now outside, you have to get that inside. This isn't easy with one hand. So, inside there, inside there. Yeah, I recommend using two hands, not holding a, a phone like that. So what you're going to be doing is when you rivet, you will drill rivet holes here and there will be epoxy in between and you will clamp these together with the rivets. Same thing here, you will be drilling rivet holes here. You will have epoxy in between these two layers. You will have surface prepped as well, of course. And, and you want to have these as tight as possible. So actually, before you stick that down the last time, you probably want to pull these up this lip upwards. So you're sort of pressing that down with the Vince bar so you have the tightest possible um, connection, if you will. You also want to make sure that you cut down this way and cut this surface as flat as possible so you don't have a ridge out here. Um, I use a large disc, a cutting disc on my angle grinder here. I, I use a smaller one for sort of the long mid part here. For the edges, I use my little Dremel. Um, what else? I use my Dremel for, for these as well. Uh, I actually first use a cutting disc and then a grinding disc to get a slightly wider gap. So, because once you pound them down, flatten them down, it's gonna close up like that. Um, yeah, oh, okay, so, so pretty straightforward. When you, so I talked about, so I'm gonna do this once again with one hand. That's kind of the 
definition of stupidity, I guess. But that's what happens when you don't plan ahead enough about what you want to talk about. Remember in uh, the first video, I was talking about towards the very end, we go outside here, we have the right side of the body. You fill your gas here. You know, and over here, this hole there. Let's see, there you go. Go inside. That's the hole I was showing where there are two vent tubes that run inside and go up front into the gas tank. That tube, it runs inside of here. It sort of comes like that and then turns and it goes really close. I think these walls are actually holding that tube. Oh, they may not, but, but it's right there anyway. So the reason I'm telling you that is you will be drilling 4.8 millimeter holes here for, for um, riveting the end plates. Um, you don't want to, on this side, on the right side of the car, you do not want to drill. So if you feel a first layer, that's fine. If you bounce into a second layer, that will be that metal tube. You don't want to drill through that. So be careful. And on these very first front ones, sorry, the very front ones, you will not be able to use the longer standard rivet. I supply shorter ones. So we have, sorry. So we have the short one and we have the standard one, okay? So there are three of the short ones, just to have one for spare. You need those, two of those three here. And the rest of the holes, you can use the longer ones, okay? That's very important because if you do drill too deep there, you will drill into the uh, vent tubes and you will have uh, gas fumes inside your car, or petrol fumes. Left side, not critical you will actually be feeling a first layer and a second layer. And I think that second layer has something to do with this reinforced bolt, this, this uh, tie down kind of thing, but you can go through, but well, that's not a problem. You'll sort of drill through and there's gonna be a small gap and, and then again, and just, you know, drill, not a problem. Okay, so that was the uh, epoxy rivet version. So what about the weld one? What's different? Um, the wild one, as I said, is very different. What is this now? My first, fourth attempt doing that with one hand. Well, I think that goes to say that if you cut this correctly, it should fit really snugly. Um, this one here, you can see the light. There's a slightly larger gap there. That needs to be tapped, it needs to be, uh, you know, adjusted. So it's really tight. Um, so when you weld, it's really tight against. Uh, otherwise, when you weld, the weld version here, you will be, you will have surface prep, this bare metal, obviously, um, in both cases. Um, I will show you in the third video, I'll show you a little bit about the surface prep for the uh, epoxy. But uh, anyway, you will have uh, a perimeter weld around this way and you will have four plug welds. And then for these, you want these clamped together again, this skin under here, up towards this you know, strip. So therefore, I supply um, screws, screws like these. So what you do is you drill a small hole, a three millimeter hole, and then you screw in these screws. There you go. Let's see, maybe it shows better over here. There you go. Um, you screw in them, you, you, you know, screw them together, you clamp them together, and then you plug weld. So you can do probably a, 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 every other or something like that to screw together. And then you plug weld on the sides, you, you screw out the screw, and then you plug weld uh, and connect them. So, because you don't want the gap in between. It's, uh, you want them to clamp together, to make a long story short. Same thing down here, because you don't have the clamping rivets, you will need to drill small holes, screw these together, clamp them together, and then plug weld or spot weld, if you will. Because what we're doing is because we took out this whole sort of lid here, the, the top piece, the covering piece 
uh, this no longer is connected up there. So therefore we have it connected to the bar and the bar is then connected to up here. Um, actually, you know what? I also forgot to tell you a little bit about, let's do that now, it's a good time. The load path thing. So we have uh, the left side here. This is where most of the cracks develop under on the underside down there. Um, so the mount is right below here. This is the rigid part. This is thick sheet metal. This is what I call the chassis leg. This is what we want to get the force from there to here. But as you can see, there's a big gap there. Um, so there's nothing connecting this to there. The force is going through this sort of box beam here, if you will. This is the inside. We, we were looking at the outside of it, the underside before. Um, it's going up into here. There's, well, actually what I've done here is I cut off a lip. There's a, sorry, there's a lip here that runs all the way like that. And this sits on top of it. So it's sort of spot welded on top there. Um, you need to cut that flush in order to get the Vins bar there, okay? But other than this flimsy sheet metal here, this is basically nothing uh, sitting on top of that. There's, there's only, there's a few spot walls underneath here, right there. There are a couple of spot walls there. You can probably just about make out um, the indentations there in the, uh, in the uh, seam seal, sorry, doesn't, doesn't show at all. There you go, you can probably see it there. And then same thing on the on underside. Um, I will post links to a folder with pictures where you can see how these pop spot wells have popped and how I've uh, uh, repaired them. Um, but that kind of illustrates how this part here is, is flexing up and down and up and down. These spot wells, because the force is pulled this way over here, the load path into there, those spot wells pop, those pop, spot well pop. And as they start popping, it flexes more and more and more. And um, eventually the, the damage moves more and more forward. And then it creates a havoc over there as well. Okay. So that was, I think, most of what I wanted to talk about for the rear bar. So once again, the installation, once you've got the interior out, is pretty straightforward. It's about cutting this opening here. It's about cutting down the T's and flattening them. It's about, well, actually, first of all, drilling from, from the underside up, uh, threading that, screwing down these, putting the bar on top, scribing, cutting, surface prepping, and drilling. And, and uh, then finally, yeah, actually, what I do is, for the final installation, okay, here comes stupid. Fifth attempt one-handed installation of the Vinspar. Okay. 